Good morning. morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we celebrate and worship together. Uh, So wonderful to see each and every one of you with us. Uh, We're excited for the opportunities that we have to worship and study. You'll notice in the bulletin uh, opportunities um, Wednesday nights and Thursday morning for Bible study. We also honor our graduates on June 4th, so you'll want to put that on your calendar. And if you have a graduate, uh, let us know the name and the place they're graduating from, and we want a picture as well to put up on the screen. We celebrate with you. I also wanted you to know that First United Methodist Church of Coral Springs has been collecting uh, items that could help folks who went through the flood. And they chose our church to bring everything to this Wednesday at noon. Uh, So if anyone has had anything that they need help with, we do have at least five families that reached out to me that had some flooding. Uh, So it's cleaning supplies, bottles of water, uh, towels, a lot of different things that people can use. We also have families in the preschool and the aftercare uh, and teachers as well who might be able to use these items. So just wanted to let you know about that, Uh, and uh, we're excited that they chose us to bring everything to, uh, and just to reach out in the community as well. I turn it over to Sherry. Good morning. I'm Sherry Whittington, Chair of um, Staff Parish Relations Committee, and I have some wonderful news to share. As Pastor Jill was reappointed uh, to our church, And starting July 1st, it'll be her ninth year. And so I just ask you to join me in congratulating her. And also, Ben would like to share some news with you at this time as well. Good morning. Um, I wanted to share some staff updates with our uh, music and worship arts program. One of them being, we have recently hired a new team member, Alicia. She's been up in the booth uh, directly above Lynn's head in the balcony for several weeks. But it is wonderful that we have qualified and capable folks of helping us in lighting and sound and we appreciate you, we welcome you to the church. So anybody wants to say hi, she's up there. (laughs) And my second update is not as wonderful, um, and it uh, pains me to say, but uh, my last Sunday with you all will be Sunday, June 4th. Um, I have some family obligations and situations happening, and it's best for me at this time to be with them. So I will miss you all very much. I've enjoyed your support and growing with you and growing our music program. And I'll be back to visit. Um, So I thank you very much. And I look forward to our last few weeks together. Thank you. And uh, at this time, would you please rise and uh, join us at our call to worship followed by our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. Lord, this day, the Lord of the burning bush and the cloud on the mountain. To God God be be praise and glory. This This is is the Lord of our lives. We acknowledge the risen Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, the Master recognized in the break of bread, and amid the dust of the Eumaeus Road. To Christ be praise and glory. This is the Savior who makes all things new. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit who enables us, seen in the descending dove, heard in the rushing wind and tongues of fire. To the Holy Spirit, all praise and glory. This is the one who empowers us even now in this time, in this place. We have seen signs of God's greatness. Come, let us sing our praise.
offer our Apostles' Creed as an affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd love for you to turn and greet one another. So wonderful to see you with us this morning. Great to have you. Our scripture reading this morning, the first one comes to us from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Chapter 1, verse 11. May you be strengthened with all the power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. And then from the Gospel of John. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out. They will find pasture. For the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us go to God in prayer. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for every opportunity we have to study the scripture, to open our hearts and our minds, our lives to your presence. Enable us, O oh God, to hear now your word. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are exactly 50 days between Easter and Pentecost. And they remind us that Jesus was not finished yet, although he said it is finished on the cross. He had time with his disciples in resurrection power to share the rest of the story. During his three years of ministry and his 40 days after his resurrection, he is focusing on the kingdom of God the breathtaking sacrifice of the cross and the forgiveness of sins and the invitation to eternal life are center stage. Yet Jesus has a message for us about how we live here and now. Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full, abundant life. Jesus saw how the religious authorities of his own day had turned God into a tyrant and a bully. His people were weighed down with burdens from the religious teachers and leaders. He shows them a different kind of God. The first message he offers is to the Pharisees. He says, God is our shepherd, our protector, and our guide, and I am the gate of the sheepfold, offering to lay down my life. They could not comprehend what he was trying to communicate. Jesus declared, very truly, I tell you, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. One of my favorite flowers is the hydrangea. You'll notice on the cover of the bulletin. When we had Easter, uh, I had, you know, one of the flowers, there are probably about six of them that were hydrangea, and the rest are lily, because personally, uh, I like a variety, right? And hydrangea actually represent abundance, gratitude, and blessing. Many churches around the world and the nation use a blend of lily and hydrangea to represent God's abundance and the love of Easter. Well, the hydrangea is a message to us that there is so much to be grateful for. If you've ever noticed a hydrangea bush, it's just covered and loaded with flowers overflowing. We had several in North Carolina that just... I mean, they were about three feet by three feet just covered in blooms. Jesus is talking to us, even though he starts with the Pharisees, that you are invited to enjoy life to its full, abundant life. A religious teacher and preacher, Bob Goff, says that the man who can turn water into wine can turn anger into forgiveness, fear into resolve, and our intention into action. The abundant life is seen in the fruit of the Spirit and in gratitude. Our gratitude actually builds a bridge to God's abundance. To be well, our well-being involves our connection to God and to one another, a balance in our work life and our rest rhythm, our purpose and meaning being bound up in something so much bigger than ourselves, a significance mindset rather than just a success mindset. You see, Jesus saw the people he encountered and he knew they needed healing. They needed healing to overcome trauma. They needed friendship and fellowship to overcome social and economic isolation. 
They needed courage to live in an oppressive culture. That is what he saw as he walked around and he invited people into a different kind of life. In Colossians 1, 11, Paul reiterates what Jesus was offering to us. He says, may you be strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory for all endurance and perseverance with joy. It's always amazing to me when you read Jesus' prayer in John 17, what he prays for us to know and experience. He does pray for our protection because he knows there are people who want to lead you astray. He prays for our guidance. He prays for our unity. And he prays for our joy. He says, may they know the joy to be found in this life. The gifts that Jesus imparts to us are applied now. Not just a promise of eternity, but a better life now. Reverend Tim McConnell in Long's Chapel uh, near Lake Junaluska, actually up where we celebrate the Western North Carolina Conference area, he put it this way, the abundant life is not about religion or even about church. It's not about how much scripture you have read or if you are a church member. Abundance is about grace. Grace greater than our sin. It's about sanctification, holy living. It's about a deep down assurance that you belong to the risen Savior. It's about a desire to tell others about this new life, life to the fullest, God's gift to us now. If you research well-being, being well, how to be well in our culture today, it mentions that there were five aspects of well-being. The abundant life is being well, a gift and a blessing from God. There's emotional, physical, relational, financial, and spiritual well-being. What does it look like to be healthy and well in all five places? Did you know that there's already global research around the world being done to address these five areas? From the insecurity and economic situations from food and water availability, to a dignified economics, to investing in under-resourced communities, to structures and safeguards, to enhance well-being for all. We place it in our faith that well-being is not just a checklist of goals for the community, but it's beginning in our relationship to Jesus Christ. The abundant life is not something we grab a hold of and forget the neighbor. God invites us to take hold of it with our neighbor. We are learning every day the ways that we can be informed to care for one another. It informs us on how we treat one another how we participate in community efforts. When I got that call from First Church Coral Springs, we're not used to being recipients of care, are we? And she said, we're gonna be taking up a collection for you of cleaning supplies and towels. And I was like, wow, wow. You don't realize how aware we are as a connection in the United Methodist Church. She was already asking her people to help their neighbor. Psalm 16, 11 tells us that King David asked of God, Show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. 
For some, the abundant life seems out of reach because of a social isolation or because of debt or an addiction. Emotional trauma, maybe a paralyzing fear. The gifts that Jesus imparts are available to all people. No one is denied access. It reminds us that our experience of God's abundance includes loving God and loving our neighbor. It's very difficult for us to celebrate our own abundance when we know someone else is in need. But we begin to see that the experience of great joy is meant to overflow from us to others. John Wesley included training and discipline for finances, for health, for well-being, for community outreach. Even as a college student, he was seen gathering other college students to get blankets for orphans and baskets of food for widows and visiting the prisons, and he was probably in his early 20s. He believed that that was so vital to our faith. It wasn't just about studying the Bible or having a personal relationship with God. It was closely linked with making sure people know we care. The abundant life spills out and over into the community. There was a movie that uh, was based on a book by Thomas Hardy called Far From the Maddening Crowd. Perhaps you saw it in 2015. There's a sheep farmer named Gabriel Oak. He has two sheep herding dogs. One is older and faithful, but the younger one seems unpredictable and impulsive. One scene in the opening moments of the film is jarring. While everyone is sleeping soundly, the younger and restless sheep herding dog gets loose. He heads out to the sheep pen. He jiggles the gate until it bursts open. And barking in frenzy, he spooks all the sheep. No one has heard it yet, but all of a sudden, Gabriel hears some stir stirring outside, and he starts to follow, and he's running as fast as he can, and he's seeing this dog scare the sheep so much they're heading to a cliff. And he's barking and barking, and he's running all around, and the sheep are just going and going in the frenzy, and they fall off into the abyss off the cliff. The film is trying to show us that we have to be careful who we listen to. If we're listening to fear, we're listening to frenzy, far from the maddening crowd is the only way to not fall off the cliff. You see, Gabriel's calm spirit will help him regain his composure he has to shoot that dog, and he has to work for others for many years to regain his ability to be a sheep herder, to gain trust in the community, to rebuild his life. Jesus is the calm shepherd who will not go to sleep in the house. He will go to sleep at the gate of the pen. He doesn't want anybody jiggling it open and pushing you off to the edge. He himself is the gate to the entrance. He doesn't want anyone to scare us, to frighten us, to frenzy us. He wants us to know we can be safe. You see, too many around us are being pushed and moved beyond their understanding. We need to be far from that frenzy. Jesus mentions thieves and robbers because he knows that some of the people that were in power in his day were already misusing their authority to crush others, 
to take away their opportunities to thrive, to experience the abundant life, to restrict access to God's grace and love. It's one of the reasons he flipped the tables in the temple. This is a house of prayer. You've turned it into a den of thieves. God's grace is accessible to all. There are some who are in leadership who will steal joy. They'll steal unity. They'll cause division. They'll steal access to God's grace, believing it is their preference or priority. Jesus shows us that is not how God operates. God is love and mercy is over all his work. Long ago, the prophet Jeremiah said, the days are coming when God will make with us a new covenant, not like the old one he made with our ancestors, the new covenant. You see, the old covenant was based upon what we need to do to please God. The motivation was approval and security. The new covenant does not change the holiness of God, but it does change the relationship we have with God. Forgiveness and grace are at the center of the new covenant. Holiness is met by Christ's obedience and the cross, and our response is gratitude. We are obedient to God out of gratitude for all that he has done for us. We don't earn God's love and favor. It's all a gift. The stunning feat of unconditional love is that it has no contingency plan. No access is denied. If anyone speaks of condemnation, it is not of God, but of their personal preference. God initiates all covenants and chooses when to throw a party for grace and forgiveness. Remember the, remember the prodigal son? The brother couldn't stand it that his father wanted to throw a party for someone who had been disobedient. God chooses God's way. We must check our own self-righteousness or even our own self-doubt as we turn to the one who came that we might have life and have it to the full. God alone can stand as judge And yet in Jesus Christ, he chooses not to lift the stone, to throw at the sinner. If we claim this new covenant, if we cling to this Christ, the door to abundance is open wide. Let us not be found to be like Pharisees, unable to share God's grace because we want to hold it only for ourselves. You see, Jesus has already invited the rest of the world to this banquet of grace. We are in turn invited in abundance and grace, leave scarcity and condemnation no place. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our song of reflection is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Let us pray. O Lord, most holy and gracious, we come before you. We hear in the message of your beloved Son that we are called to an abundant life and that he is a shepherd that shall guide. O Lord, may we trust in this. May we experience that blessing of guidance, the revelation of your love, the purpose that you have before us. Forgive us, O God, when we lose sight of all that you have created us to be, when we forget who our neighbor is, they are all around. Lord, may we be kind, may we be loving, may we build up one another in faith and fellowship. Help us, O God, to overcome any obstacle, anything that makes it difficult for us to experience this abundant life. May we seek healing where we are broken. May we seek strength where we are weak. May we seek your understanding where we are confused. O oh God, we offer our prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand for our closing hymn, Joyful, Joyful. As we receive the benediction, we are so grateful for the generosity, those who share and able to share, and the pedestals are all placed around as you come in and out of the sanctuary. We're very grateful for your support. May we receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and make his face to shine upon you. May you receive and experience the forgiveness of your sin. May you receive and experience the lifting of your spirit, the healing of your heart. May God bless you and keep you now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to, I guess, to the lobby, yes, to celebrate for reception.
very excited to have you with us. Thank you.